Okay, I know class has been over for quite a while, and I'm still talking theory, and that's because I really can't overemphasize the importance of theory, especially as it relates to the behavior of these devices and resources. So what I want to do is I want to kind of talk about what we've just done, and then I want to talk about what we're going to need to do. The first lab that we did was a Layer 2 VNI lab. And if I were to just dissect this lab very quickly and take a look at what's going on, we know that of the resources that we had to deal with, we dealt with and had this LEAF 101, and we had LEAF 102. And obviously, they're connected by an IP infrastructure. But right now, I'm kind of choosing to ignore that simply because I'm talking about this again from the theoretical aspect. We also know that I had a resource out here called Host4 that had a MAC address of CAFE. That was the last four pieces of information on it. And we know that it was connected via Ethernet 00, 00 to LEAF 101 on port 1 slash 7. And the same thing well, over here on LEAF 102. So I have H5. H5 is connected to ethernet 1 slash 7 and it has a mac address of ccie cc1e to be honest and again it is physically connected on ethernet 00 now what i was trying to do and what we actually did build was we built a connection such that we could actually traverse this ip fabric this ip enabled infrastructure that subdivides LEAF 101 and LEAF 102. Now, obviously, that takes into account that we have the spine, which is a transit resource and everything. But right now, I'm just trying to focus on the immediate configuration. And what we did is we actually came in here and we created a VLAN. We created VLAN 10 on both sides, the same VLAN. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to implement the idea of, of being able to obtain and have some type of layer two adjacency. And that layer two adjacency was achieved through the creation of a layer two VNI, a VXLAN tunnel that connects the resources inside the same VLAN. Honestly, that's all it was. So what we ended up doing is we created VLAN 10 on this side. And we created VLAN 10 on this side, but what was absent and what was missing is, is the way for us to be able to interconnect these resources. And what we ended up doing is we ended up creating a connection between them through the deployment of a VXLAN tunnel. So what we did is we came in and we said that we were going, we needed to create a way of interconnecting VLAN 10 to other resources. And we did this through the creation of a layer 2 VNI tunnel. And that layer 2 VNI tunnel is actually using VNI number, VNI. We came in and we actually assigned it 10010. And through the creation of this tunnel, what ends up happening is, is I have the capability of being able to interconnect these resources such that host 4 and host 5 can communicate one to another. And this is the prime idea behind the idea of a layer 2 VNI. However, that begs the question, what if I did not have devices and resources that are in the same VLAN. So in all honesty, what I want to do is I want to remaster my drawing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and advance. And what I want to do is I want to paint a scenario where we're going to actually be describing a layer three VNI. So layer two VNI is going to be a way of interconnecting resources that are in the same VLAN. And we connect them using a shared VNI. And as a direct result of that, I can send data at layer two. But a layer three VNI is a little bit different. It's got a few moving parts. It's not any more complicated, in my opinion, other than the fact that it does take some patience to get it set up and you have to understand what it is you're doing. And we also have to implement this idea of routing. 
what we would refer to as inter-VNI traffic or inter-VNI forwarding. A layer two VNI is intra, so it's inside the same VNI. Layer three is obviously is going to imply I'm going to be routing between segments, which means I'm going to need a router to accomplish that. Well, we're going to build a routing construct, and we have one. It's called a VRF. And you're going to find that this is going to smack of the things that we were talking about in the context of ACI. So what I want to do now is I want to talk about the way that I'm going to end up changing my environment to reflect what it is we're trying to look at. So I'm going to have leaf 101 over here, and I'm going to have, again, leaf 102 over here. So far, nothing has changed. I still have H4 that's going to be connecting to leaf 101, and I'm going to have H5 that's going to be connecting to leaf 102. And we, nothing is changing. Ethernet 00, zero on the device itself. And we will be connecting to Ethernet 1.7 on the actual leaf itself. However, one of the things that's going to change is, is the fact that I'm going to change their network segments. This guy's going to be in 1.7 to 16, 10, and I'm going to go ahead and give him an address of 101 slash 24. And then 5 is actually going to be in 1.7 to 16, 20. Dot one o two slash twenty four. Now this also smacks of the fact that if I want to get off of my Ethernet segment, I'm going to have to have a gateway of last resort. The gateway of last resort I'm going to use is going to be dot one here, and it's going to be gateway of last resort will be dot one here. But they're in different networks twenty and ten. Now that means I need to create or have separate VRFs. So I'm going to have a not VRFs but VLAN. So I'm going to create VLAN ten, which already exists here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a change over on Leaf 102, and I'm going to create VLAN 20 over here. And that means that that needs to be configured on the interface Ethernet 1.7 facing host 5 as far as its configuration. And also, it means I need to configure a VNI. So over here, I'm going to create, configure a VNI of 10020 to represent this VLAN. And then over here, I've already got VNI one zero zero one zero. But you can see here, they're different colors for a reason. And that is, is the fact that these resources do not span across multiple switches at this time. And remember, when we did the implementation, we were talking about the fact that these resources need to speak to one another. So in other words, what I need to do is I need to get traffic out of host 4 into LEAF 101. I need to have a way of being able to carry that traffic across my VXLAN enabled fabric to where it can actually arrive on LEAF 102, be forwarded to H5. But the problem is, is we're not layer two adjacent anymore. We're in two separate subnets, and therefore, what we need is we need routing. Now, the way that we're going to accomplish that is, is we're going to come in here, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a VRF. In fact, I'm going to create a VRF that's going to exist on both of these resources. In fact, I'm just going to draw it out as one big box, and I'm going to create a VRF virtual routing and forwarding instance, and I'm going to go ahead and call it tenant 77. And the cool part about a VRF is remember a VRF handles routing. Now remember I mentioned the fact that we have gateways of last resort configured here and configured here. So one of the things that I'm going to need to do is I am going to need to configure a gateway that's going to be running inside of my VRF. And the easiest and best way to do that is going to be to create an SVI interface. So I'm going to configure an SVI interface. This interface is going to be in VLAN 10. And then what I'll do is I'm going to configure another SVI interface on the other side that's going to be in VLAN 20. 
And because these resources are all part of operating inside of the same VLAN, it should only stand to reason that they're going to be able to communicate one to the other. So this is going to actually give me a way of being able to implement my gateway of last resort that I'm going to implement it inside of the virtual routing and forwarding instance. Now, the next thing that I'm going to also want to make certain here is that I'm going to assign these values. So over here, I'm going to have 1, 7, 2, 16, 10, 1, slash 24. But this is also, this is actually going to be an AnyCast gateway. Why? Well, in this topology, I don't really need it. But later on, I may choose to actually have this exist on other devices. In fact, VLAN 2 VNI 10010 may exist on other devices. And by creating an AnyCast gateway, what that means is, is just like the ACI did, wherever this resource exists, I want to have that gateway and I want it to be discoverable, which means I'm going to use that AnyCast gateway MAC address of 0001.0001.0. .0001 zero zero one that we created and the same thing is actually going to be applied over here so i'm going to go ahead and give this guy an ip address of one seven two sixteen twenty dot one slash twenty four and i'm going to configure it as an any cast gateway so you can see now traffic can actually travel from h4 to svi vlan 10 and i should be able to actually have a point of presence into the tenant 77 vrf now it's also important to understand that we want to configure and implement these resources in such a way that leaf 101 and leaf 102 can talk to one another so what we're going to do and the way that we're going to accomplish that is, is remember i have another set of sub interfaces or svi interfaces remember and they exist on both sides in fact i I'm going to have interfaces. Uh, let me pick another pen color. That's that's atrocious. So um, I'll go ahead and pick yellow. Remember, we have the SVI or we have the Loopback 77 interface that we were using. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new VLAN. I'm going to create VLAN 77. And VLAN 77 will actually exist on all devices. And VLAN 77 is also going to be tied to a new SVI interface. So I've got a VLAN, so now I can create an interface VLAN on both sides of the equation. So now what we're going to see is I now have, as a result of this, I have a common resource that exists on both side of the sides of the equation that I can use to carry or to provide transit functionality. Since they're inside of the same VRF, they can see each other. And they can communicate with each other. When we look at this, this is really no different than drawing a router. So this is, a, this is an actual router with two physical interfaces on it. I have network, whatever that address is. So in this instance, I would have um, the uh, VLAN 20 or VLAN 10, and I have VLAN 77. And over here, I'm gonna have the exact same scenario. I'm gonna have VLAN 77, and then I'm gonna have VLAN 20. And when we take a look at this, VLAN 77 is actually going to be spanned across my fabric. And I'm going to be using it as a layer three VNI. Another way of saying this, this is going to be a inter vni tunnel so what's going to happen in this scenario is this data is going to travel from h4 in fact i'll pick a different pin color here and i'm going to go with a lighter color or, or a more narrow pin that data is actually going to be able to travel from here to here from here to here across the tunnel to here where it's going to be able to be routed to here, and then ultimately it's going to be able to be delivered to the resource that I want to speak to. Now, in order to be able to implement this, it's a handful of commands, but I wanted you guys to have kind of a 30,000 foot look at exactly what it is we're implemented, implementing and why we're implementing it, 
Because in the ACI, all of this takes place underwater. It's all handled by the APIC. Inside of the Nexus resources, 9Ks in an XOS mode, 7Ks, 5Ks, these are all things that we as administrators actually have to handle ourselves. Now, all this does is this leaves the changes and modifications that I need to make to the infrastructure. And what we'll do is we'll review that in the next video. I'll see you guys there.